action. Tory Lane's got 10 years. That makes me so angry, man. I'm hot. Meg Thee Stallion, you from Houston, Texas, and he got 10 years for playing with a big old person called a stallion. Ain't a stallion a male horse? Hey, man, Tory should have got that 10. And she want to run around and act like a man, <laughs> talk like a man, behave like a man, and Tory sat there and played with you, but that other girl was giving you the business. Tory should have got that 10. Now, now, as far as what happened, as far as what actually happened that night, it's so many different stories. It's so many different perspectives that it could be explained. But I can say this. What was the girl's name whose house they was at? I don't know who Ka house Kylie was Jenner. I think they was at her house? It was at Kylie Jenner's okay. house. That's why Meg Thee Stallion was mad because Kylie Jenner was giving him the... It, she was interested. She was interested in him. And she was like, how in the world you come to the party with me and now the host of the party want to do you? And so Meg got mad. I say this. I could totally believe that everybody was drunk. I could totally believe that everybody was uh, really at a point where they could get belligerent. I believe that. I believe that everything that transpired in that car and outside of that car, even before they got to that car, um, could have been totally avoided. I I'm believe a, I'm going to tell you why I said Kylie's name. But everybody involved had, a, had something Because to do with Kylie it. got multi-million Instagram followers. And just a little while ago, like two months ago, she was on her Instagram Live jamming to Tory Lanez. And the whole internet exploded. They was like, how in the world? That was her silent support of letting everyone know, hey, Meg is a bitch and Tori is a nigga. <laughs> hey, she stood in protest and solidarity with Tori Lanez. Let me give some game real quick. I got to give some game. This is why it's going to always fall on you fellas when you got a bitch that's out of pocket. Let's go. You got to know your bitch. Now, see, now we got to talk game. We, we taking out the gloves. I don't care if this come off cool or not. I don't care if it got to be sensitive. But let me explain why I think Tory should have got everything he got. One. I disagree. Uh, keep feel, rocking. Feel me. I'm, keep rocking. I'm just saying. I don't, I, don't know, I, I, I don't know about the crime itself or if a crime actually took place. But you got to know the bitch you bring in other places. If you have a bitch that has the potential to get out of pocket, get out of line, cause any type of ruckus, you are endangering yourself. You are in, you are endangering her. Let's call that reckless woman a trick. I just I want to I want to I want to have some type of respect for these old treacherous well, ass well, people. Hey hey let 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 let's call them uh females. Hyenas. I know they they hate that term. Hyenas. Females. Oh, that's cool. You got a female out here that don't know how to behave out of and, and act accordingly in mm -hmm. public. That's problematic for you and for her. And I'm going to tell you like this. Every chick don't got to go everywhere. You can't take every girl everywhere. So I think Tori taking her, Meg, who, who was a, took him. A, a new celebrity, or did she, she take him? She invited him. She invited him. Okay. Yikes. She invited him to the party. Yikes. Hey, well, look, I'm going to even say this. Chick invite me somewhere. I'm just, I'm just with her for the night. I ain't even, I'm not macking on nobody else. I ain't tripping. I ain't doing none of that because at the end of the day, it's an outing. We don't listen. These women are cause a scene. You know why she invited you there. You you should know that you you can check the temp. You know why she invited you there. Or if you invite her somewhere, you know why you may be taking her someplace. You just you can't have every woman everywhere. And I think that's what he's a victim of. I think that uh, she probably did get jealous. They got into it. I'm I not, think they I, got into it and it, it escalated from there. I'm not a player. OK, I'm a barbarian. Understand? The moment you say anything disrespectful to me, it was a pleasure to meet you. All right? Bye. Okay? And you're going to look at me all astonished. Like, why in the world is you asking me to leave? I'm not asking you to leave. I'm demanding that you leave. <laughs> and you will never be in my presence again until you learn how to behave. Hey, so so this coming in uh, from, from, my, from my YouTube live is that that's not a fact is what you heard from the blog. So Kylie Jenner, I guess that's not a fact that she was actually, you know. Everything you're hearing came from some blogs. You hear what I'm telling you? Whatever, whatever you think that you heard, the, the whole industry knows what happened. This is, this has been reported. They had brain cameras. They was in the Hollywood Hills. They have videotape of everything that happened, and a lot of those things were inadmissible. The person who, had, who saw eyewitness that a woman had the weapon, the uh, prosecutor came to him, and man, there were so many nefarious things that happened in this trial. So you don't think he had any type of physical altercation with her? You think he may have been trying to protect someone She else. was beating up Kelsey and then Kelsey went back to the car to bust that thing on Meg and then he took the gun from her and bust that thing and said, y'all stop bullshitting. We in the Hollywood Hills. He was the peacemaker. See, like, look, even still, man, I don't know. I just find it all weird. I find I find that whole situation strange and I, listen, 
I have been in play in places with women about to go at it, and I've been able to stop it. I think as a man, you just got to get in and stop it. Yeah. How did the gun even get? They all know. I don't know. That Meg I'm not rocking with Tori. They say Meg is a drunk. They say all you gotta do is give her a fifth of henny, and she's gonna get blackout pissy, and that's that's what she was known for. After the Tory thing, now she went to rehab and got sober and all that. Tried to re tried to redo her image. But they was they was best friends. She was at his house all during the uh, when he was doing the COVID show, whatever whatever the Tory show was on Instagram Live. She was always there with him. All the bodyguards, all she was going to him all the time, and she was upset because another one. I, I don't, I don't. But see, look, th this is another thing that men need to understand. If you're there, you need to take control of the situation because if you don't, you're gonna be found at fault every time. Nobody. It will never be thought of if Meg had a a a, a drug abuse, alcohol abuse hey, we, problem. We have to stop. We have to stop cutting these females some slack. I don't give a damn what they think. You go, if you misbehave, your behavior is you. I'm not gonna be held accountable for no reckless ass person. I'm just not going to. And for like for the whole Tory thing, hey, men just gotta stand up for men. I just believe all women. So I he should have let. Damn. So I, I tell you what, the only way you protect yourself in that situation. Is if that if she was if Kelsey was going to get that gun, let her get that gun and do what she do. I hear I hear what you're saying, but when you say as a man, my I'm a protector. I'm I'm a protect I'm gonna protect everyone around. Me. Right. And so when when that situation went bad, everybody was drunk. They all was drunk. And the people who were sober, who wanted to speak, money talks and bullshit walks. Uh Jay-Z and Rock Nation put a whole lot of money behind Meg, Meg the Stallion so that she could beat that case. So why didn't uh why didn't Meg rat her friend out? Why didn't Meg rat? Because man, it's girl code, bro. I, I've been in situations where girl, I don't, I don't care right or wrong, a girl will stick with a girl just to down a nigga, bro. And so again, <laughs> he played himself, dog. Hey, I think he played himself the entire situation, even by. It, I, it, I don't it, disagree. It, if that was, if that was. Like I I don't like that this has become such a like civil war between men and women online. It why really not? has. Why why don't you like it? Uh I think because it's praising celebrity culture again. A like fe a female has zero power, period. One thing about me and you, I'll say this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Hey, I'm hey, when it come, hey, I'm saying this with love. When it comes to checking the bitch, I'm all on top of that. Like holding the bitch accountable, holding the female accountable. I'm all about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, I don't like how we parallel ourselves to celebrities because that was a celebrity situation. We're all picking sides based off emotions and we don't really have a full understanding I'm, about I'm what's going on. I'm having a conversation about male, female nature. And it'll never be a time ever in the history of the world will any woman in my presence ever have more power than me. And you're going to understand that. And you're going to behave accordingly. And I think that's, that's not a threat. No, nah, no. Nah, hey, look, I'm in agreeing. I, look, I'm in agreement with that. Let me tell you something. And this, this for the men, too, because I feel like we need to we really need to let y'all know something. If I got to put my hands on you, if I got to talk too much to you, if I got to talk too loud to you, if I got to argue with you too much. Hey, Drew. Very problematic. I can do whatever I want. If you don't like what I'm saying, do something. If you don't like what I'm doing, do something different. I'm leaning in all the way into masculinity. We have tucked our dicks for far too long, and I ain't tucking my dick no more. If you don't like what I'm saying, better do something different. If you don't like what I'm doing, you better do something different because can't nobody stop me from doing what I'm doing. That's power. I'm a real feminist because every woman, she's expecting me not to use my all of my power against her because she has no power against me. Understand it. Believe it, okay? So you set the standard, and she has to... You, so a woman needs to follow your standard. Bro, I am, I'm, am angry. Hell yeah, I'm absolutely mad. But but, but what I'm saying to you... No, I ain't say angry, but you're standard. I'm saying yeah, yeah. she's taking my courtesy and my kindness for weakness and right. just going, just running around. So what you going to do? Do something, do something, knowing that I can't do nothing. And so now I'm like, hey, 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 hey. If you don't like what I'm doing, you better do something. <laughs> hey, I feel you. Hey, men as a whole, men as a whole, we're going to include the strong men too. We are cowards. We have really let the society get too loose. We've let it gone down the drain because we're afraid to check women. We're afraid to say, hey, you're wrong. We're afraid to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Even in this situation, the most powerful we don't have realistic you said, conversation. You said boundaries. Right, boundaries. And so my boundaries are, if you ever not act like a, a female woman around me, if you ever not in your female feminine frame, 
you will not be around me. Hey, uh, this is very important for you to understand. Dick runs this world, not pussy, okay? Like, I'm the savage. I'm fucking. You getting fucked. Do you understand? Like, that's how this situation works. I'm not taking dick. You taking dick. I'm in the position of power. And the moment that you start... Most women lay there like a fish anyway. Most women can't throw that ass anyway, all right? I'm doing all this thumping. Call me thumper, okay? And so when I get done thumping, if that orgasm makes a woman behave in such a way that is, is respectful and mannerable. Orgasms do make women act better. It's something that I, got, uh, that I say women have, a lot of women suffer from, is UDE, under dick energy. And they have attitudes and they have weird moods when they're not being dicked regularly. That's why I think women, when women are in relationships, when women are married, when women have husbands, uh, they act better. They're in their natural role. They have, you know, in sperm, there's antidepressants even, and shit like even that. It's in, good for them. Even in marriage, the male role has been so emasculated because of divorce. That's I'll true. I'll take your children. I'll take your house. And I'll take your money and you can't do shit. And that puts me in a, in a state of submission. And I'm saying, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if you're married, unmarried. Hey, if 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 any point in time you misbehave, you disrespect me, you say any any slight, goodbye. Because there's somebody waiting for this dick. All right, I got a question. What's up? If the stance is men need to take leadership, then how can you stand beside someone in the wrong? Whether he did it or not, he's the man. Because I don't situation. care. I don't care about your thoughts. Whatever. He's a man. I'll stand with that nigga and I'll fight with that nigga. And you ain't can't. You got nothing to say about it. What's up? So your your opinion in male matters doesn't matter. So you think standing besides you think standing beside Tory, we as men. Okay, let me ask you a question. What's Do up? you think as men? I like this conversation. I think this is a great conversation. Do you think as men we should stand beside Tory Lane? I think as men, I'm going to stand beside you. Right or wrong, I'm thumping. Hey, if you, you get in a crowd and shit go left, I'm thumping. If the, if the bitch go left, I, hey, I'm with you. Ten toes down, loyalty. All this, my feelings, her feelings, situational. No, nah, that's my nigga. What do you think men have to do in the... First off, what do you think the current state of men... Like, what current state are we in right now? What do you think our condition is as, a man over, as men overall? At this moment right now, it's the revenge of the man. It's the revenge of masculinity. We have allowed for 20, 25, 30 years for allowed the, the woman to just run rampant. Anything, o Oprah Winfrey and all this female media, anything that she says is acceptable. Bitch, that shit is dead. I'm crying, bro. Hey, I'm crying. <laughs> because they can, they can sit there and run their mouth all the time. So what do you what do you think what do you think men need to do? Like what what, what do we need to do to salvage masculinity? In fact, I, I will say this. I don't think a lot of you men, we know women don't know, but a lot of you men don't know what the fuck masculinity even is. Hey, I think that's one of our enemies too, is simp, simp, simpology, simpism. I'm going all the way back to just primal instincts, period. There has to be no physicality whatsoever. There are boundaries. The moment that you step outside of my boundaries, then you're dismissed. The only thing that men are supposed to do is meet ladies and have babies. That's it. End discussion. Everything else is negotiable. Oh, you want me to be a father? You want me to be a husband? Behave. You don't behave? Cool. Somebody else is going to come get, the, get this thumper. That's a hot take. And you want to know something? It's actually true. It's actually true. They control access to sex. I control access to relationships. That's true. You want to get married? Behave. You want me to buy a house? Behave. That's true. You want me to be a good father? Behave. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Call me thumper. Hey. I need all the shorts on this. I need it sent to me because it's, it's it's a whole bunch of heat that didn't came off of this. They've been playing for true. too long, bro. They've been playing with my name for far too long. My name is Man, and you respect me as such. I think the way we do that, though, <laughs> is we need to be more selective with who we have sex when it comes to them and who we procreate with. I think that's something that we need to do. Chivalry is a gift. Yeah, I, I believe am, that. I am an animal. Like, we're talking from this Western, this Western ideology right now. No, bro. I'm a, I'm a savage barbarian. I fuck hoes, period. They get pregnant. If they don't behave, I'm going to fuck another one. I'll say this, though. <laughs> I think, I think as, a, as a man matures and gets wisdom and becomes the complete man, he operates in a different space. I think at bare minimum, that's, that's a part of masculinity. You ever heard this parable? It was a parable, right? There was two, two cows, two, two bucks on top of a hill, okay? 
and one the young buck said it was a whole bunch of cows down the hill. The young buck said, "I'm finna run down there and fuck one of these heifers." He ran down there, he started pumping on one. The, the, <laughs> the old buck said, "The old bull said, I'm finna walk down here and fuck all them heifers." <laughs> I hear what you said about growing in masculinity and all these things. Hey, with legislation and the way culture has shifted, they have all the rights. And so I have right to bodily autonomy. And my bodily autonomy is I'm going to slang this dick and talk shit and you can't stop me. What? Hey, I'll say this too. And, and we just, and we, and we just, we just got a comment. Hey, this is a throwaway. We just got a comment on the live. So I'll say this. Um, I do think men should check each other. I think men should check each other when they're wrong. Um, I don't think we should stand beside everything. I'm not standing beside everything. Cause if it's some hoe shit, I'm not, I'm not standing with it. You got to be solid. I think men have to check shit when it's wrong. I also think I'm so glad we're talking about this because one of the things that I want to talk about was men, black men specifically having an arrested development. Can men, can men make mistakes? Yeah, men can make mistakes. How do I hold a man accountable for his mistakes? I watch that nigga fail, and then I give him wisdom after he failed. Yeah, I exactly. Treat, I treat every young person as my brother, every older man as my father. Yeah. All right? I'm not in a position to dictate to no man nothing, okay? Exactly. And so I'm going to watch that nigga fail. I'm going to dust him off and say, nigga, you all right? And, and I think that's what's needed. And now, women don't understand this. Now, this is what women need to understand. The way we deal with men, y'all need to take notes from because y'all y'all try to attack a man, which is not in your best interest. And guess what? For a man, it's not. Hey, this man right here, this a man. I can't come tell this man what to do and he better nothing. Like he just said, if it's something that he wants to do, he does it. And if he fails, I pull this brother to the side and say, hey, man, I noticed this and I wanted to say something, but this is what I think. And we talk with each other out of love. But you can't make no man do anything. But I definitely think we have to check each other when we wrong. And so for Tory Lanez, very specifically, hey, bro, stay away from five foot ten bitches who like to drink. All right? <laughs> you fucked up. They shouldn't have gave you the ten. When you come home, leave them drunk hoes alone. Do I, <laughs> do I agree with you being in, a, in an abusive situation? Never, ever. But I'm gonna let you take your lumps. Then I'm gonna say, "Hey, dog, yeah, right. let's make better decisions now." That's accountability. That's brotherhood. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely gonna tell. I'm. I'm gonna tell any man that has issues with women that he needs to choose better. But we suff. We 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 were trash at picking mates and the right type of women to to mess with. But I'm gonna back up to what I said about arrested development. That's right. We are stuck in between 18 and 25. We don't really progress past 40. And that's where we, that's where the gems come in. And as black men specifically, we need to really start approaching our situations, our lives with a more mature mind. We need to talk with each other the way we are in a more mature space and give education. Each one teach one. A lot of us just don't know. We out here just, you know, living our lives with no guidance and all. Men need guidance too from other men. You need from wise men so you can guide these women. If we, we can't guide these women if we ain't got no wisdom. Modern society ain't got no resistance. You went through boot camp. You got some resistance. You went through us, went through structure and the format of the military to understand hierarchy. You got some discipline. A lot of these young brothers don't never have no resistance. They ain't got no father figure in their life. And so they just aimless. And so with all this aimless, they listen to what a woman has to say because they aspire to have a piece of vagina. That's not my goal. No, you're exactly right. And I feel like, again, you know, fatherhood. We wanted to talk about that, too. I did. Fatherhood is so important. Having your father. Who do you learn to be a man from? What do you, who do you where do you learn masculinity from? in his proper perspective? Where do you learn how to be a man from in his proper perspective? Is your father. This is someone that has gone before you and have has gone down this journey to learn things, being a man, that he's supposed to reach back and teach you. And a lot of us suffer with that. And guess what? How do you even learn how to deal with women? You learn from your father. You learn from watching wanted, models in the I household. Want, like, when I hit you up, I want to have a, a man conversation about a man's feelings and how we talk about uh, women having postpartum depression right what about men who are separated from their children separation anxiety when you miss your kids you know what's gonna happen if my kids are gone for uh, more than a week and i tell my ex-wife hey, i miss my kids she's like you'll see them next weekend yeah. that's the compassion <laughs> huh yeah this the summer's about to be over my kids going back to school going back with their mama right and i'm like hey, i miss my kids you'll see them next summer like that's the level of compassion so when i want to talk about my feelings i understand look in the mirror hey don't i give a fuck about my feelings and that's what it's like being a man. It really is. 
it feels that way. It and, and the reason why I say it feels that way is because it doesn't have to be that way now in the modern society, now that we can actually talk amongst men and have groups like this. Because some of you men out there feel lonely. Some of you men out there feel depressed. And a lot of what we're talking about, you never heard another man talk about it. And you need something relatable to change your spirit and your soul, Man, right? Crazy ass numbers, like 60% of men from the ages of 18 to 32 are single. The exact, That's crazy. The exact same uh, sec, sub section of women from 18 to 32 they say 30% is single. So what is they doing? They smashing each other, they smashing older men, and they smashing the same man. Another thing too is, man, suicide rates amongst men 30, is, a year. is high. 30,000 a year. It's high. We're not talking. We're not talking to nobody. We're not even expressing ourselves on how we feel, even about what we just talked about. Because I've battled that too. I love being with my children all the time it's and having to have an peace, alternate custody is 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 it's miserable. It's a miserable thing. It does hurt. And who do you talk to when you have these issues? Who who are you supposed to reach out to um, when you're feeling sad, depressed, and you feel like you can't go on? But the I, bills I, I gotta have, get paid. I have a network of men. <laughs> I call my brothers, right. and we have this conversation. Right. My brothers divorced. My brothers divorced. We understand what this shit feels like. Uh, my uncle passed, and he was like, "Hey, just just don't take no steps back because as soon as you give up ground, the bitch thinks she won, and you ain't win shit, man." You, you're you're using the fact that I cannot use my physicality and using that shit against me, and you're laughing at me because you know that you're in a position of power. Can I say something What's though? Up? I think that this is why I say it always comes back to you as a man. I'm gonna talk some Navy shit right now. You're right. You know, as a leader in the Navy, and I, I talk to I, I talk to my wife a lot about this too. Like when we're bringing up examples, but like a, a leader in the Navy, even if you were not there to actually do the thing that is deemed incorrect but if you're like if you're in charge it is your responsibility because you set the standard you're right you're supposed to set up the parameters of how things are done correct and this is why i'm going to bring it back to mates because this is where i think men suffer remember i've told you guys before that we're terrible at picking mates a lot of the destruction that we suffer from in our lives is because of the poor mates that we've chosen and a lot of people have not given us instruction on the type of mates we should choose and i'm gonna tell you where i learned this at dating Dating. I have Let's, been with... Just, go ahead. Just dial back just a little bit. Come on. I, I want to find the right mate. Bro, there's very few good women out here. And very I, few. That's okay? true. They've been raised by a single mother or raised by Instagram. That's all true. Right? Or, or an absentee father who was subservient to the mother. True. Like, I, a good mate, I'm trying to tell you, the only way that we course correct is to check these hoes hard. Hard dick, talk shit, bitch behave. I could dig, I could dig some of that because <laughs> I'll say this. A woman's gonna acquiesce to a, a real man. If you really, if you stand 10 on what you believe, firmly on what you believe, you have standards in yourself. Remember those parameters I talk about. You set that up for yourself and you let that woman know that potential mate that you choose. If you let her know these things, that's gonna work in your benefit. She has to acquiesce to you if she wants you. You have to set these standards up. Look, there are women out there that will do what you ask them to do, but that's all on you. And you're right. There's not a lot of wives out there. There's just a bunch of girlfriends and why, whores. Why is Pookie so powerful? Because Pookie don't got no career. Pookie don't give a shit about no pussy. He gonna slang dick and play PS5. And she's like, damn, why doesn't he call me back? Why doesn't he send me no good morning Now text? imagine if Pookie changes his mentality to, I'm going to use my talent to get the one I really need so I can ascend to where I need to go. That's often that doesn't happen with men. So a young girl who's like 18 or 23 years old, she knows that her beauty is going to get her to any room in the world. Okay, Yes, that's true. That's her reality. When you are a man and you figure out how to slang that dick and you know how to make a woman orgasm, you're like, holy Christ, I can fuck whoever. <laughs> and they gonna do whatever. I ain't never gotta call her. That's I a part of it. I ain't never gotta text that her. That is a part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Sexual... Well, I'm gonna choose one when I can have 10. The sexual skill set is a part of it. It's just how do you use it. There are parts of the, um, I would say, the, the, the player persona that you can use to have some control, some influence over your woman. It's just how do you use it. I think a lot of a lot of men don't know how to use it. And also a lot of men just don't know who to pick. And this is again, this coming from somebody who has been with so many women and been able to take the collection and gain an understanding and how to operate. With, like, you with, know, with all this aggression, I'm a feminist. If you can do it, watch me do it better. 
<laughs> y'all done pissed them off. I'm man. telling you. And y'all pissed them off. And when y'all get in these comments, somebody said we look like we should be in the Netherlands section of a museum. What was that they, they, even about? They called us Neanderthals. Oh, Neanderthals, my bad. I, I, okay, I'm they sorry. They called us fucking cavemen. I, I was driving and I saw Netherlands, but Neanderthals. So we're Neander, Straight we're cavemen. cavemen. That's what you think? <laughs> I would never put my hands on a woman, but I'll drag a bitch with my tongue. Stop playing with me. A Neanderthal. <laughs> We're not white. You know, white people have Neanderthal in them, not not black people. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> man, you're hilarious. That's I, funny. Because, man, I, I have to laugh to get some levity to this conversation. Right. I'm tired of playing this. this there, there is no gender war. It's me being kind and you taking my kindness for weakness. And as soon as I decide to be hard, you're like, why are you being like that for? And then even in my anger, I'm still going to stare at you stern and you're going to suck this meat. This is the revenge <laughs> of the man. Hey, we bringing masculinity back, man. This we getting y'all. We want y'all to grow some man. balls. We want y'all to get some balls out there. Hey, I don't think women are our biggest enemies, though. I, I'm telling you, it's the simp. It's the simping men. Because every time it. OK, how many times you've been on Facebook and you're going in to check a misandrist? And I, thank you for saying the word. Yeah, because that's what they are. You're checking the misandrous and a, and a simping man comes in and oh, or maybe more. And oh, we're from the 90s. I don't want no short, short man. Nah. Itty bitty, teeny weeny. Yes. OK, y'all been sitting over here body shaming men for 30 years. And when I call you a fat bitch, you get mad and call <laughs> me a misogynist. Hey, you know, I've. I've talked about that, <laughs> how women will talk about penis size. And you know what? How about this? When they are done with the man or they feel like they want to shame this man, they will talk about his endowment. They will talk about his penis size. But you're also correct. If you say you don't want no big woman or you don't want no fat chick, it is a problem. But I'm going to tell you what that says. You What's know what up? that says? There's a weaker link there. They're very childlike. Things that they complain about are very childlike. Men, you're in leadership roles. I expect the child to talk to me a certain way that I wouldn't talk to them. And that's what we experience with women often. If you want to share your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings, go get yourself a girlfriend. When you come around me, it's a motherfucking to help me accomplish my mission so I can be on my purpose or to take this dick. And that's it. <laughs> you want a friend? Man, go call 1-800-GIRLFRIEND. <laughs> Not me. This is the revenge of a M-A-N. Huh? Call me by my name. If you don't want to call me man, call me sir. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.